deer do not raise uh, other deer as a family. So the bucks breed the does, the does go off, have their fawns, which is accurate here, but the dad is not in the picture. He's definitely not standing over with a proud look on his face and a hard rack. Hey everybody, wildlife artist Ryan Kirby here, and today we're gonna be critiquing one of the most popular pieces of deer content ever, Bambi. So we're gonna take a fresh look at it from an art and a biology perspective. You know, right out of the gate, we've got Bambi here with his mom in the woods, and this is really good from a, a nature perspective. It's um, it's springtime. Um, you know, it's everything's leafed out early summer. He's got wobbly legs, spots, and the way they portray him, you know, with his mom solo right there, is really accurate and really good. One of the things that I love uh, is how they render the deer's back legs. That can be really hard sometimes, and they've done a really good job. And you can tell that. You know, in 1942, these, these artists would have gone out to study real deer. They couldn't just look at photos or references. So you can tell a lot throughout this that they've done their research and they've really done a good job rendering these animals. Towards the end of this scene is where we get into some of the the, the, the storyline where they have to tell a story and they go away from biology. The first thing is when his dad appears. So summertime, deer do not have hard handlers, okay? They're gonna be covered in velvet. Um, obviously his dad appears regal, hard antlers, amazing rack, he's probably a booner, but the dad is gonna be nowhere around these the fawn, okay? Um, deer do not raise uh, other deer as a family. So the bucks breed the does, the does go off, have their fawns, which is accurate here, but the dad is not in the picture. He's definitely not standing over with a proud look on his face and a hard rack. So this scene here is is one, this is probably where Disney stretches the storyline away from real life as far as possible, where Bambi first sees other deer and other males. And uh, you know, these deer run out into a field. Um, all of them have hard racks in the summertime while Bambi has spots, does not happen that way in real life, they'd be covered in velvet. But they're all in this field running around like little soldiers and they're all the same size, same age. And in a real deer herd, you're gonna have different age classes. In a healthy deer herd, you're gonna have different age classes of bucks, from button bucks to yearlings to two, three, four, five, maybe even six and seven year old deer. And in Disney, we've got a one spotted fawn, like 30 year and a half or two and a half year old bucks, and then the patriarch of the, the forest and it does not happen that way. So this is where Disney really stretches it. Uh, the other thing is this is when Bambi meets his dad. Um, they have really worked, accentuated his proportions to make him look like a stag. He kind of has a mane, super exaggerated um, front quarters. Really, you could you could put a lion on his head, swap it. He's built like a lion, really. He's got a mane and big chest, big barrel chest, and um, recognizes his fawn for the first time, which definitely does not happen in the deer world. You know, most mothers will kick their fawn out at a between a half year old and a year and a half old. He's gonna move, start his new home range anywhere between one and five miles away. So the odds of a buck fawn being in the same home range as his father is, is really very unlikely. The other thing that Disney definitely doesn't wanna talk about is does can be bred by multiple, multiple bucks. So there is no such thing as a, a mother and a dad raising a fawn together. Um, and a lot of times it's even impossible to tell who the father is of a fawn. So does can be bred, be bred by multiple bucks. 
there's a lot of dispersion in the whitetail range. So the odds of a, a buck fathering a fawn and them growing up together are pretty much non-existent. And you, you have to have that in the deer world to spread the genetics around. You know, the gene pool has to stay muddy on purpose. So um, that's probably the biggest stretch, stretch scene that we have here. Now in real life, you know, we, again, typical Disney pattern, they go through a real intense fight scene, now they're frolicking in the, in the meadow together, uh, chasing fireflies and things like that. Now, this idea that a buck and a doe get together and they're boyfriend and girlfriend and then they, they frolic around for weeks on end um, and fall in love is obviously it's part of the storyline here. But the reality is those bucks and does are together for a very short window till she will stand for him she'll let him breed her and then he's gone to the net, find the next doe. He does not stick around to meet Bambi. <laughs> now this scene here is this is one of the scenes that you see hunters react to so negatively, and it's it's pretty obvious why. Um, you know, hunters are painted as the bad guys here. Uh, it does that doesn't mean to say that hunters sometimes we don't dig our own grave because we do stupid things. But by and large, this is not how hunting happens. Um, you have a guy running the pack of just mutt looking wild dog hounds. Um, coming through the forest, shooting indiscriminately at anything that moves. And that isn't how it's done. Um, you know, as hunters, we have, we have seasons, we have bag limits, and those don't always coincide. So it's very rare that you're going into the woods trying to shoot multiple species. That just doesn't really, doesn't really happen. Hunters, by and large, are really good stewards of the resources. Um, we do a lot of habitat work. We do a lot of things to improve the health of the herd. And hunting, whether people want to accept it or believe it or not, is part of keeping a balanced herd, keeping a healthy herd. You know, you have to take some animals out of the herd in order for it to be healthy. One of the tools that state agencies use to balance the herd is hunting. And when you take some of those animals off the landscape, the ones that are remaining have more nutrients, more habitat, more resources to grow bigger and healthier. So despite what Disney does here, hunting is always gonna be um, misportrayed uh, in, in the media, in Hollywood. And it just kinda is what it is. As hunters, we just have to do the best we can to not fall into that stereotype and highlight some of the good work that we do because we do a lot of good work. Another, another thing that Disney and Smokey the Bear have done to, um, to sort of brainwash people is to show that fire is bad. Fire is actually a really good thing here. Um, it's really good for the landscape. It's a really good natural thing that's occurred over thousands of years. You know, massive forest fires are obviously not good. We don't want that. But what we do want is prescribed burns where people go and they actually burn tracks of timber or properties or grasslands on purpose and in a controlled manner where you have fire breaks and, and you do it when the weather's right. Uh, those types of things actually do a ton to increase wildlife habitat. And we'll get to that in a second, but habitat is better after a fire. And it's sort of the same thing that's happened with hunting here is when you, when you show it negatively and portray it neg negatively, it's gonna be seen negatively, but there's way more nuances to it than that. So fire can actually be really good for, for deer. And then again, everything comes full circle. And um, Bambi, you know, what? one of the, the ironic things that you see here is they actually show part of the landscape that was burned and it's grown up nice and lush. And they show this in the movie, which you gotta give props to Disney for, for including some of these actually accurate things. 
So the landscape has grown back up after the burn and it's real lush and green and that's where Bambi's fawns are, are born. Okay, so Bambi's grown up, he has, has bred the doe and now she's got twin fawns. And twin fawns are a really good thing um, you know, genetically, some does are naturally just predisposed to kick out twin fawns, and that's great, but it also comes back to the habitat. You know, they've got to have good habitat in order to be healthy enough to produce twin fawns and get them to survive. So, in an ironic twist at the end, the habitat that's produced by the fire helped produce twin fawns. So that is my critique of Bambi from both an artist and a hunter's perspective. Um, again, great art. Um, some of the biology is off though. And one thing that I've tried to do in my own career and with our own line of, of paper prints is to combine both in an accurate way. So I take art that I've created and some information that's approved by the National Deer Association and try to combine the two in a line of paper prints that can also educate and entertain people because you always wanna have both. You wanna have the accurate art and accurate biology together. So um, check my work out at ryankirby.com. Hope you've enjoyed this video as how I would look at Bambi from an artist and hunter perspective.